So we have Todd Clauser from um, Refine Labs. He recently did like a song on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so maybe, maybe, maybe you know, I should also introduce um, Todd through a song as well or something. Uh, Todd, uh, join me on the stage here. Let's talk about TikTok. So uh, what, what was the song that um, Todd was singing? Uh, it was like, um, over the past month, Todd has done in reviews, something like this. Todd, you here? Talk to, all right. I thought I'll have to do the TikTok talk myself, man. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, unacceptable. How dare you? I... Anyway, so I'm glad you're here, man. Uh, sounds like you've been busy talking to people. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. So uh, what do you say we kick this thing off? Let's let's give it the go. Share your thing. Let's see if tech works. It is working. All right. Well, I'll pause off and I'll, I'll see you in about, you know, 20, 25 minutes. So. Okay. So, um, hey, everybody. My name is Todd Clauser. Um, I'm the senior brand marketing manager at Refine Labs. And I've been running company TikToks uh, back since 2019. Um, but more recently, uh, I started putting out personal content and sharing that personal content to LinkedIn and saw how effective that TikTok content can be uh, on other platforms. So back in late February, I put out a, a post saying that anybody who wanted to take 15 to 20 minutes of my calendar time uh, that's interested in TikTok and wanted to either pick my brain or ask questions or whatever, uh, take some spot on my calendar and we would do that. And I had over a hundred people uh, take me up on that offer. And I want to start this presentation the same way that I start every single one of those uh, consults, which is with a question. And the question is, are you on TikTok currently? Now, that could be in a consuming uh, sense. You could be creating. You could be neither. Um, but if you would, go ahead and, and drop over in the comment section. Let me know if you are on TikTok uh, in any form. And if the answer is no, hopefully by the end of this, this presentation, I can show you, you know, why it may be a good idea and how you can, you can get started in doing that. So here is the, the results from that same exact question asked across these 100 B2B professionals that, that came to me from LinkedIn. 75% of those people were already on TikTok, but haven't created a single piece of content. Only 15% of those people have actually created something. And, and of that 15%, the vast majority of those people created one or two pieces of content. They weren't consistent with it. Now, the reason that's important is because there is this massive discrepancy right now between creators and consumers of B2B content on TikTok, which gives early adopters this massive advantage to build out their brand on that platform and, and relatively easily get in front of, of all those people um, within, within the B2B niche. The second question that I asked, and I'm assuming that if people are on this, um, this presentation, they, you at least have some curiosity uh, about TikTok. So the, the second question that I ask is, what's your biggest blocker right now in creating content? And by and large, Two, two answers dominated that question. The first is, I don't know how to get started or, or what to create. And the second is, I don't have the time. So I'm going to spend a little bit tackling how to get started and, and how to figure out what to create on TikTok in order to be effective. So if you answered that previous question with, I'm not on TikTok, I want you to take 30 seconds right now download the app. Uh, if you are on TikTok, I want you to create a separate account. And what this account is going to be, I call this a burner account. So you don't worry about like getting creative with the name or anything like that. 
The sole purpose of this account is to scroll the platform and get the best of the best that TikTok has to offer showing up in your feed on a daily basis. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how you do that. Whenever we're done with this session, I want you to spend 30 minutes and I'm going to give you a to-do list and a to-don't list on this new account. First thing, you're going to start scrolling the for you page anytime you come across a trend. So that could be a, a dance, a trending audio, whatever, skip it. Don't engage with it, don't watch the whole thing, just keep moving. Second, and this may, this may seem counterintuitive, but just, just hear me out. If you come across any B2B related content, keep moving. Again, the goal of this account is to surface the best content that TikTok has to offer. And I can assure you with 100% certainty, B2B is not creating the best content on TikTok. The one thing I do want you to do is that when you, when you find yourself watching a video from start to finish, and specifically if it's a longer video, like if it's, if it's 45 seconds or longer and you find yourself going from the beginning to the end and you're not bored out of your mind by the end, I want you to go to that person's profile. And this is what you're going to do. In the, before we start diving into individual videos and all that, I want you to take a macro look at their profile. So just kind of get a sense of what they're doing. First thing I want you to look for is, are they doing episodic content? So generally, this is pretty easy to see um, because most people doing this will put thumbnails on their, on their actual videos. So you can see part one, part two, part three, et cetera. So it's very easy to see if it's episodic. Number two is, are they creating multiple series within that, within that um, profile? Again, this is pretty easy to tell um, from thumbnails, but if they're not naming with thumbnails, once we dive into the, to actually looking at content, this becomes very easy to, to figure out. And then I want, I want you to look at their post frequency. There's a there's this, um, people, people are basically saying that you have to post like four to six times a day on TikTok to be effective. When you start looking at all these really good accounts, I want you to be very mindful of the post frequency. Are they posting once a day? Are they posting four times a day? Are they posting three times a week? May Across several accounts, I want you to, to take note of this frequency. And then which content in that account is actually getting engagement? You can tell based on views at the macro level which, which uh, content is being surfaced. The beauty of TikTok is that on this platform, um, it, it's very good at surfacing content at the content level and not the account level. So um, as an example, if I follow any one of you on LinkedIn, and today you put out a post on personal branding, and tomorrow you put out a post of your favorite recipe, because I follow you, I'm probably going to see both. On TikTok, if you put out a post today on personal branding, and I've watched 30 other videos of yours that are on personal branding, and then tomorrow you put out your favorite recipe, nine times out of 10, I'm not going to see that, that recipe post unless I actually go into your profile and find it. So this is a very good way to figure out which series are working, which ones aren't, and which different audiences they're, they're um, getting served to. So after you look at this from a macro view, I want you to start going into the person's actual content. So ideally, I like to start all the way back from when they first started. If the person has thousands and thousands of videos, um, that may not be feasible. So maybe go back like a month or two and then work your way back to, to the most recent content. What you're looking for is commonalities in how they produce content. So are they, is there something specific about their filming style, how they do transitions, lighting? You want to figure out how they're, they're keeping your attention. Is it how they tell a story? Is it they're entertaining? They, they do education. Is there a mix? 
I will tell you, if you are doing a, a mixed content approach where you're doing education and entertainment, it is incredibly important that the, the messaging and the entertainment is in line with the messaging and the education. Like a lot of people make the mistake of going super broad with the entertainment, like kind of make fun of just office culture in general. And then the education is like super niche. So the, the goal here is the entertainment and the education really have to be in line with the, with the same audience if you choose to do a mix. And you, you'll be able to kind of see that as you investigate these profiles. So I want you to do that, that same exact process 15 to 20 times before you do a single thing, before you post a single video. And at the, at the very high level, you're going you're gonna to figure out a couple things. One, you don't have to do all of the stereotypes that are associated with, with uh, TikTok. So you don't have to dance, do trends. You don't have to do six videos a day. It doesn't even have to be entertaining. What a lot of people in B2B don't realize and they think you, you can't do, which you can and you'll find, is you can repurpose your LinkedIn content over to TikTok. So what I tell a lot of people to do when they get started is go back and audit your own, uh, your own LinkedIn content. Find the post that got the most engagement over there and then use that text post as an outline to create video content that makes it extremely light lift. You already have this huge backlog of content that you can work from. And if it's old enough, you can then take that video post and repost it over to LinkedIn and nobody's going to remember it anyway. So you definitely can repurpose your LinkedIn uh, content to TikTok. You can use your podcast content. Now, I want to preface this by saying if your podcast sucks, and you're, you're a boring interview, the person you're talking to is boring, just because you have a long form piece of content that you can chop up into 30 pieces of short form content and put them on TikTok does not mean you're going to be successful. Posting podcast content on TikTok, you can do it, but TikTok's gonna tell you really quick if your podcast sucks or not. So uh, be mindful uh, when, you, when you try to repost podcast content to TikTok. And the, the third thing that, that you're going to learn really quickly is TikTok content takes almost no time to create. Like when you start going through a lot of these, these profiles, you're going to find people that are creating content in app. They're not using fancy editing equipment. They're, they're not using, you know, cameras or anything. It's all filmed in app or in your camera phone and then, and then pulled in. And, and you can do that kind of stuff in, in 20 minutes a day. The longest part of creating TikTok content is actually thinking about what you want to post, which is what I'm gonna cover next. Um, consistency is incredibly important on TikTok. So what I tell people is before you start posting something, you need to create a framework that allows you to stay consistent sustainably over a long period of time. So for instance, what I do and what I recommend most people do is create different series. And this is one of the things that I learned when auditing a whole bunch of different accounts is that some of the best content creators out there, they're creating these series. And what I've found is this makes it incredibly easy to be consistent because I can take one topic so, and just for people that don't know my, my content, my, my three series are if B2B marketing did, which basically you can plug in any, any X, Y, or Z into that. I've done if B2B marketing did press conferences, infomercials, five o'clock news, whatever you can plug it in there. Um, I do, if movies were about B2B where I basically cut out one side of the conversation and, and make it about B2B. And then I do the remote office, which is basically like um, mock Zoom meetings. But the beauty of this construct and these series is I can take one idea. So 
let's let's take uh, for example, if I wanted to to poke fun at people pitch slapping in DMs, I can take that one idea, I can plug it into if B two B marketing did, I can plug it into if movies were about B two B, and I can plug it into the remote office, and I can post that exact same message, which when we're when we're brand building, you know repeating your message is important anyway. I can repeat that exact same message three times, three days in a row within these different constructs and every single video will perform just as well as the one before it because they all feel different to the person viewing it. So create a framework and this can be done for, for educational content as well. This isn't my, my content is mainly uh, entertainment, but this same, this same thing can be done for, for educational content. So create a framework that makes it easy for you uh, to be consistent. And then at that point, it's time to execute on that strategy. So what I, what I tell people to do is think of this like a podcast, right? Um, I, want you to, I want you to create each one of those series uh, right off the bat. Before you post the first one, I want you to create all three. And then you can basically, like I said, think of this as a podcast. If somebody watches, if somebody sees your first video and they go to investigate your profile and they want to see more what you're about, you want to have a couple videos in the backlog there that they can see so they know you're not kind of like a, a, one, a one post wonder. So po uh, film all three, post them all on the same day. You can space them out. And then after that, like it's game time. Now you're, you're posting consistently. I recommend people do it once a day, but again, it's about consistency. If you can only do once every other day, do once every other day. Once you start to build up that muscle and they start taking you 10 minutes instead of 45 minutes, you're going to be able to post more. The ideas will come to you. People will start commenting, asking you to talk about or do other things. And then it becomes way more easier as you build this momentum. And then the, the third question that I ask people uh, on every single one of these interviews is, what's your goal uh, in, in creating TikTok content? And, and feel free to, to drop this in the, in the chat as well. Um, but luckily for, for most people uh, that I've spoken with, the goal is brand awareness, creating brand. Uh, I either want to build my personal brand or, or brand awareness for my company. And right now there is no better platform than TikTok to do that. And here's why. Every other platform out there makes it extremely difficult to share your content across platforms. TikTok took the exact opposite approach. You can literally download your TikTok from within the app and it will perform just as well, if not better, on other platforms as it does on TikTok. Because every other platform out there right now is seeing the success of TikTok and they're rolling out their own features to try to copy it. The beauty of this is for this audience, LinkedIn, uh, TikTok content on LinkedIn is a huge unlock. I'll tell you, I, I've been on LinkedIn for probably two and a half years regularly. And I started posting regular TikToks January 1st. And up until January 1st of this year, I probably had 1,800 followers. From January to now, I'm at like 8,000 plus just from putting video content about TikTok. So it's a, and the reason for that is people get what I call text post fatigue. So, or at least I do. You're, you're going through LinkedIn. It's like text post, text post add, poll, text post, and you read the first two or three maybe. And then as you continue to scroll, you, you get this fatigue and you'll kind of skim it. And if you, if you like the person that, that is posting it, you'll give them a like, but you're really not consuming the content. So you, you just keep, you get in this like scrolling mode and then you see vertical video. And especially when that vertical video has a TikTok watermark, you automatically stop because your first instinct is this is going to be entertaining. And on a platform that is overly dry, 
entertainment works. And even if your content isn't entertaining, you still get that person to stop. At that point, it's your, it's your job to, to keep them engaged. But stopping the scroll on these platforms is, is half the battle anyway. So with TikTok content, you get people to stop the scroll. Now, I'll, I'll leave you with this. When, because this is a, a, a branding um, presentation, when I'm doing the, when I've done these 100 plus interviews to date, I would say about on about a third of them, the second I let the person into the Zoom room, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, I feel like I already know you. And if you're trying to build brand, what is more powerful than somebody feeling like they already know you? And for me, that unlock has been TikTok video. So that's it. Um, happy to take questions. Uh, awesome, man. Uh, really great to hear all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, got a bunch of questions. So, okay. It's building a brand and, you know, people will know you and all that's, that's great. But what if I'm selling, you know, like very serious enterprise B2B software here. And then I'm like doing like funny, funny shit on TikTok. Like how do those two go together? So uh, I'll, I'll take this from, from two perspectives. The first is I think one of the, the main stereotypes of TikTok is that you have to be funny or entertaining which is, which is 100% not the case. As the platform matures, so does the audience and so does the content. Like I'll use Chris Walker as an example. He posts very similar content on TikTok to what he does on, on LinkedIn. And we're already getting people within our own self-reported attribution saying, I found you through TikTok. So number one, I would say that um, don't, pigeonhole yourself into thinking you have to do entertainment. Um, what was the part two to, uh, yeah. Like, uh, so if, if I, if I'm, if I'm selling, you know, important, serious stuff, like, yeah. you know, so I'll, mean, I'll use, I'll use Mark as the example. Like I, I literally, the first time I ever came across Dooley was fire talks and I shared fire talks with everybody at the company I was at. And I mean, again, like that is, that is a entertaining take on a serious topic. And like what I'll say about the entertainment content is there, there still has to be messaging underneath it, right? So for example, like when I'm putting out most of the content, now this doesn't apply to like you were mentioning the song, like, I mean, that probably wouldn't apply, but to most of the content that I put out, there's an underlying message. So like, for instance, um, like I was saying with, if, if you do a mix of educational and entertainment, like those two things have to align. So like, even if I'm putting out educational content, like one of the most common things that I see in my comments is about people learning stuff, even though it's, it's, it's displayed in an entertaining way, but the entertainment is, is getting them to consume the message. And I can get them to consume that message over and over and over again because I'm putting it out in, a, in an entertaining way. Gotcha, yeah. So Jovita is asking, uh, what according to you is good content in B2B that can be successful, especially if it's not entertainment? Um, so I guess you addressed it, but anything you want to add? Um, there's, there's a ton of ways you can do, you can do, um, educational content on TikTok. One of the, one of the things that I did when I first started doing TikTok, honestly, like I wasn't, I wasn't super comfortable on camera. So I literally, I started out by doing the same thing that I told you guys to do in the presentation, which is go back to old LinkedIn text posts and, and basically create video from that. So I think that's a good way to start, especially if you're not super comfortable on camera. Um, 
but there there's plenty of different ways like like podcasts one of the things that that i'm doing internally at my company now is i've got a lot of subject matter experts internally so i'm setting up 15 minutes with each subject matter expert within my company and i'm just pitching questions and they're they're some of them are like lighter like would you rather type stuff some of them are very much like fully educational questions there's a lot of ways that you can pull this content out of other people on your team even um and and put that out with success uh sono is asking for some examples so are there any b2b companies out there killing it on tiktok with the right content i'd love to follow so who's doing it well um B2B companies on TikTok, there's, there's not a ton. I'll give you a couple. Um, but again, this is, this is part of the advantage right now, that there's not a ton. You have the ability to be that, that person or, or, or company. There's a ton of personal accounts. But from a, from a company perspective, I would say Chili Piper does a really good job from a – um, like an employer branding perspective. Um, at Refine Labs, we're, we're very much like my goal is to showcase the, the collective knowledge of, of the, the subject matter experts internally. Um, sales feed is probably like the master class in combining entertainment and education in the same account really well. So there's, there's definitely examples out there. Um, but from a company perspective, like the, it's a, it's a open playing field right now. Awesome. Uh, I think that is, uh, it, uh, Todd, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me.